I would consider myself more of an introvert. I'm an introvert. I consider Roy to be an extrovert. I would say that I'm an introvert. I am a extrovert. Honestly, I'm an introvert. And I consider Sandra to be an expert, extrovert also. <laughs> So, what's all this talk about extroverts and introverts? What are they? I would describe an extrovert from someone who gets their energy from being around people, but for me specifically, being around people that I like. Outgoing, willing to put themselves on the line. Wants and needs to be around people in order to um, function to their best. Describing an introvert, I would say reserved, pretty shy. They don't necessarily need to have other people's company or even affirmation in order to be comfortable with who they are, that they can't be shy and awkward. Like in a classroom, there's always one person who's just kind of like in the corner and doesn't say anything. That's probably an introvert. Yes, they don't like to be the center of attention. They would prefer being in the background somewhere. I feel like an introvert is a person who is not lonely being alone. Well, the traits of extroversion and introversion are personality theory. Extroversion means that a person receives energy from outside sources, such as the world, people, and experiences. Introversion means that a person receives energy through inside sources, such as their thoughts and activities spent alone. People often find value in learning which of these traits someone is, through using the information to understand how someone processes and experiences the world. The terms introvert and extrovert first came into popularity in the 20th century by Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Carl Jung. Research shows that genetic makeup has a lot to do with which side we lean towards more. This is often revealed in humans at a young age, however, not all show such strong introvert or extrovert tendencies as a child. That's a good question. Uh, have I always been an introvert? I, I want to say that no. I haven't been. I would say there was like a brief period of time when I was like 13 to like 15 where I was an introvert. So like I called myself an introvert because I thought that, oh, extroverts are loud and annoying and like dumb. Gotta be an introvert, right? Because I'm angsty and bad. I feel like I've always been an introvert um, ever since I was little. I've always kind of enjoyed being by myself. <laughs> Not everyone is a strong extrovert or introvert. Rather, these terms lie in a spectrum, some to more extreme ends of it than others. This can make for extroverted introverts and introverted extroverts. In addition, those who lie in the middle of the spectrum are referred to as ambiverts. They receive energy through a mixture of being alone and around others. One thing that's important to keep in perspective is that one personality type is not better than another. Both extroverts and introverts have benefits and difficulties. Some benefits being... Because of the way I am to other people, like the way I talk to other people, I, I get a lot more closer relationships. So I get to know people better than if I were to have all these friends. I can take time to reflect and think about situations, think about, think about people, think about why did I feel that way? What is wrong? What is bothering me? Instead of ignoring it, I want to address it head on and I have the energy and the focus to do it if I'm alone. So I feel like I'm more forgiving because I can understand my flaws and then it helps me to understand other people's as well. I could go like, a week at least with like being around people for the entire week and like never getting tired or like feeling drained around them that we as uh, we participate we both are involved in uh, developing friendships and meeting people and some difficulties include a big thing that I really yeah. struggled with was really connecting with people um, because I didn't know how to really interact with people, but at the same time, I think I put a lot more pressure on myself, per se. Some difficulties that I face with being an introvert is 
just the labels of um, being shy. Um, I never liked that growing up, people calling me shy. I always felt like that was a negative thing. Um, so that's something. And then also, too, um, public speaking. I find that there's this, like, paranoia or anxiety or fear when, when you have to talk to a stranger. And, I mean, I've been getting better at that in general. But just, like, calling somebody on the phone. I don't know. I, I'm starting to try to just talk to random people. That's still hard to do. <laughs> I think there's always the possibility when you're an extrovert that um, if you come on too strong with somebody that it may be offensive to that other person or it might send a wrong signal. Um, so I can see where that can um, be a downside of being an extrovert. In our responses sometimes it's either too sharp of a response or too quick to turn away from a situation mm -hmm. when maybe that was the time we should have sat down and listened to someone. Sometimes people mistake your eagerness, I guess, to be around people and to like hang out as like immature and too outgoing and too noisy. In fact, in the 1960s, Psychologist Hans Ensnick made a groundbreaking proposal that extroverts were defined by having a chronically lower level of arousal than their introvert counterparts. In physiological terms, arousal refers to the extent that bodies and minds are alert and ready to respond to stimulation. An example of a person displaying varying levels of arousal throughout the day is, imagine an exhausted person drinking coffee and immediately feeling the effects of the caffeine. Or in the opposite sense of the word, an excited person sitting through a lengthy lecture. Their arousal levels both heighten and drop according to the situation at hand. Human arousal levels shift throughout the day, as seen. Esnick's theory stated that extroverts have an ever so slightly lower baseline of arousal, the outcome being that they need to put more effort into receiving the same levels that others effortlessly have. This manifests through extroverts seeking out that arousal through experiences, others' company, and sometimes even risks. On the other hand, highly introverted people can often become overstimulated by situations often seen as normal and even exciting to others. This often steers introverts in choosing more quiet situations and predictable environments. Another theory that's been researched is that the difference between introverts and extroverts lie in how each mind processes stimuli. Extroverts' pathways have been seen to be shorter, passing through sections of the brain where taste, touch, visual, and auditory sensory processing occurs. Introverts have been seen to have a longer pathway that runs through sections of the brain where memory, planning, and problem-solving processing occurs. While introversion and extroversion are not an all-controlling aspect of who someone is, this trait does tend to play an influential role in someone's life. An example of this is in choosing careers. When I was little, uh, I went through a lot of different phases. Mm -hmm. So at one point, I wanted to be an oceanographer. And then at another point, I wanted to be a teacher. I think me wanting to be those things when I was younger was more affected by my interests mm -hmm. than being an introvert. Right now, I am a graphic designer. I would say that choosing this profession was probably affected by me being an introvert um, only because it's a kind of a individual career. So mm -hmm. I sit at my desk by myself, I work independently for the most part. Um, I do get to work with others, which I do enjoy, mm -hmm. um, but most of my time is by myself, <laughs> which kind of fits with my um, personality. Um, I wanted to be a chef for a long time because I thought it'd be so cool because I love cooking and I love to make people happy. Would I say that decision was affected by me being an extrovert? Um, I honestly don't know. Right now I'm thinking I want to do something with hospitality and management. I also really want to do things involving youth with like ministry. When I say that that decision is affected by me being an extrovert. 
Um, yes, because those are things where I would need to be around either kids and or adults all the time and I would need to be able to just be comfortable like talking and like interacting with other people and not that introverts don't because really it has something to do with being an introvert but I think the majority of introverts are more shy more reserved and like like to talk less just from my experience. There's many incorrect stereotypes about extroverts and introverts. Some of these you may have heard before. Some people think that extroverts are shallow, wanting only to talk and go to parties. And some people think introverts are antisocial, hating people and only wanting to stay inside their home. While some people may have these traits, it's not their extroversion or introversion that causes it, but their own personality. There are plenty of deep-thinking, level-headed extroverts and plenty of talkative, welcoming introverts. In a recent book on introversion, author Susan Cain explained that although introverts tend to make up a third to half of the population, Western society, the United States in particular, is extroversion-centric. She noted that schools and workplaces are designed for extroverts under the belief that collaboration is key to creativity and productivity, the opposite of which happens to be true for introverts. In addition, extroverted traits such as being a people person and social are highly valued in today's society. Being an introvert affected my academic life in a good way in the sense that I could study on my own. So I had the time and had the energy um, to be able to explore all these subjects that I'm now interested in and didn't even know at the time existed because again, I was comfortable being by myself. In regards to my academics in a, a less positive light. Um, there were some things I felt like I, I did miss out, um, like maybe study groups. Maybe there was other viewpoints of people that I just was not aware of because I was never within their proximity. Would I say that being an extrovert impacted my academic life? Um, <laughs> maybe yeah, because I hate school and I hate studying and I would rather be out with friends I don't try as hard with school as I try as hard with like building relationships and stuff. Going all the way back to like elementary school uh, because I was quote, introverted a whole lot, um, didn't really interact with as many people, but that meant I spent a lot more time in books. I wish I could say that now. And uh, it really helped out, especially going to college and you know, getting scholarships for those. And I feel like if I was more extroverted, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. Did I miss out on a few things? Maybe, but I wouldn't change it for anything else at this point. Both extroverts and introverts have a very important place in society. I think that neither introvert or extrovert is better than the other. I think they both are great. They both are also have their flaws and their downsides. I think that it takes all kinds of people to make up the world, so I think there's a place for introverts because I think sometimes they're really deep thinkers and they don't just react. It just kind of depends on the setting. If you're, you know, sitting in a group and nobody knows anybody, it can be really dull if nobody is an extrovert. In those kind of situations, I think there's room for everybody. Um, though I do wish like I had that ease with other people, but um, I've come to the terms that I'm probably not going to be as comfortable with people as an extrovert. I am going to have to work harder at it, but I do think that it is achievable um, as long as I'm willing to step out. I've realized that there's strengths in being an introvert and everyone um, was created differently. And so I don't think one is better than the other. I don't think that there's when it comes to introvert or extrovert, I don't think there's a good or bad. I think it is, there's a balance. 